back. Now I've just uh, sewn in two more sectionals um, in between and uh, yeah, I had to undo one. I didn't quite get it right, but um, that was okay because it's a learning curve. I'm just gonna sew the last one in again to show you. One of the things to do before you sew your sectional is to make sure that your pages are where you want them. So I ordered mine in. And also my little bit had the top and the bottom slightly different, so I turned it round. So I've redone one of mine. So I've got the smaller one at the top and the big one at the bottom. And then I had to turn it round and do it the other way. So it is a learning curve, but if you're very patient with it, it will reap the rewards of nearly finishing. So I might clip back on, because that does help a little. And so what we do is start in the middle, and now I'm at the end, so it does get a bit more difficult. I'll poke that one through. Okay. Bring that through and then make sure that you don't lose your end through the top one. Obviously you don't poke those as much, but yeah. and then through the top up here. Hopefully I've got this one right. And the other ones. There we go. And then holding on to this one, pull that in so you've got quite firm there. And then back into the centre, I did go through the string, but it did seem to work quite well. Back through the middle, making sure, see I've got the, my finger on this bit as I pull it tight. And then back through to the bottom one here. And then into the bottom of the book. Again, I think I've tried to keep the holes quite small, but it has been a bit tricky getting them in, but you can make your holes a bit bigger. And as you can see, we're having trouble. So I might just push that through a bit more. So I'll put it into the deeper. There we go, much easier. And then keeping hold of this one, pull them tight. So you want to make sure they're quite firm, but not too firm because you will rip the pages. Tuck through the top. And then what I've done is I've adjusted the, this length here. So I pulled that through there, pulled that one back through there. So you get a bit more length on this to do a nice knot. And this is the start of your junk journal being finished. So what you have then is your nice four, reasonably tight, but not too tight. You've got your binding and then all your pages are now sewn in, as you can see. We are going to be putting our sectionals in today and then covering up the book, finishing off these tags and then we will have a book ready for us to start journaling and filling out. Um, I have had a really good week. I'm not very happy that my edges came out like this, but decided to go with that and accept that and let it go and actually going to take some advantage of that um, edgings and put some stuff on it. Anyway, let's get on. So I've chosen this piece of paper to match my book because we're going to be covering these parts today once we've put the middle in. I've also realized that I haven't done this bit yet and I haven't prepared for that. So I'm just going to be getting up and finding a piece of paper to go in here, a stiff a piece of CAD. But this is a stamping up retired designer series paper that I'm using for this. And I thought the, it really matched up well. And yeah, so I'm just gonna go and get that piece of CAD. I can see some over here to put in the middle here just to reinforce that. I will be back in one moment. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Hopefully I've got everything here that I need. Right, so what we're going to do before we put everything together is uh, this is a, a very strong double-sided tape and I refer to it as the rib tape and a lot of crafters do. Um, and I haven't got the packaging for it, but if you go to most um, 
online craft stores you can get some red tape. The other glue we're going to do today because we are um, putting something in really needs to be firmly stuck is I use the 450 quick dry adhesive. Um, it is very sticky as you'll see when I'm doing it but it does really have a strong bond and when you're putting these sectionals in you really need to get a good stick there. So let us begin. We are going to cut this piece to go in here just to reinforce it. So what I do is I take my bone folder and I mark it out this way because I find this is the easiest way to do it. there. Okay, so using a trimmer to cut these now. So there we go. Now that is going to go in there. And all it does is, and you'll notice when we put it in, it just gives that a bit more strength. So I'm going to just go in here with my Tombow multi-purpose adhesive. Plenty of it you want to really get a good bond. Put that in there. And it should, because you've bone folded it, sit within that nice groove there. And if I get this bit right here, just a back of the excess glue. The Danish Journal to complement the courses that we do at Walking Tall Online and to complement any process of journaling. Um, when we journal, often it will be um, diaried, or it will be maybe a trip overseas, or it could be um, just literally uh, recording our daily thoughts. Um, the reason I'm uh, doing videos on this is that uh, one of our courses, particularly our anxiety management course that's coming out, we're encouraging people to make a journal and then to, as they go through the course, record their experiences, um, their practice exercises, how they feel, how they progress, and then to record notes to themselves so when times are a bit tough, they can actually go to their journal and go through what they've written down. Um, so it's really um, quite a good way of creating something that you've done. Often when we have a self-help book or anything um, that we've bought, often it will go onto a shelf and to be forgotten. But what I find working with people in this way, when you've created something and it's quite texturized and you've, you know, it's not the perfect thing, but you've put all that work and effort into it, often what happens is you will go back to it time and time again, just to even just to admire your work. I find I'm, you know, find myself just feeling it and looking at the different textures, the different words that are already in the book from using um, old catalogues and how the crunching, crinkly bits have gone, and even the edges that didn't work out too well, and you know, it's not quite straight. Even that is something to look at, and just to say, I've made this, it's homemade. It's, you, you can't buy something like that from a shop that's been processed off a, a, a line. Right, I think that's dry enough, and we will get back to it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue this into here and put those down there. So the first thing we're going to do is take our extraordinarily strong tape and we're going to put a strip either side. And what we want to do is bone fold this in so it really gets into the texture. And then turn over and do the other side. Okay, so that's that. Right, and what I do is I put another piece in the middle here. I think when it comes to putting these things in, you, it's better to overdo how much tape you put in than under, because the last thing you want to do is have that 
thing up. No. The thing I find with this tape, this is extraordinarily hard to get off. As you can see, the tape's come up. So if this takes too long, I will edit this bit out. Or we will just do some mindful breathing. Oh, no, it's become a little easier now. I'm going to pierce again. There's different ways I've watched people do this process, but it just every time it's just really difficult. So we're going to take this 450 glue. Now, the thing with this 450 glue is it's very... Well, if you're English and you're my age, you will um, relate this to what was called Bostick. I now live in New Zealand, so I'm not sure if Bostick still exists. But Bostick used to be like this. But basically, you wait till you get it down. And what's going to happen is as soon as you turn this, it's going to start oozing out straight away. <laughs> And if you don't close the lid straight away, it oozes all on its own. So we want plenty of glue, particularly around here. Very awesome. It doesn't smell like the old plastic that I remember as a kid, which is good because that was probably full of chemicals. And you want to go sort of to the edges, but you really don't want too much oozing out. Although the beauty of this is once it's dry, you can peel it off. But as I say, once it's done, it's done. Okay, so turn that straight away. Get your baby wipe and just take care of that first. As I said, it's very sticky. Okay. You are going to put the book into the centre as best you can. Lining up the bottom there the best you can. My head comes into shot on here. And you, you can still see it sort of moving. And then what we're going to do is bring this up here. And I've not stuck it down yet. I'm just checking that that is reasonably in place okay i'm liking that position take your time with this bit now we're going to put that down as you can see that bustic 450 glue gives you a bit of maneuvering but as soon as you start rubbing it it will start the tape this tape will help it stick until that glue starts to dry. Now, the really important thing here now is to start really, as you can see, that glue is coming at the end. Wipe off wet or leave it to dry and peel it off. So I've done that one. I'm going to turn it around and go this side. So you can see, see how it dries and you can just peel it off. It's really quite useful that way. And then what you want to do is open your sections. Open your section. And just take your bone folder. Now start to bone fold these in. And then this one. Now it, it's worth spending a little bit of time just working on this. Just a bit. Once you're there, the aim now is to close the book up. You can see it's sort of puckering a bit there. Close the book up and then just get your hands in. I hope you can see that. Get your hands in there on that crease. Then push your bone folder in. You really want a good connection seam there. Come to the back. Again, good connection. I like how that back is looking, it's even at the top. Um, where there's a few gaps, don't worry about that for now because you'll cover that when you, you're going to cover this bit. This bit you're going to cover with your pattern paper. So don't worry about that so much. But I'm happy with that. So what I tend to do now is I just work flattening. And as you can see, there's a gap there. So I'm working my bone folder 
just to rework that edging just below my fingers and we'll turn that up and see how that's going like that so we want to work those edges in push that down so it makes contact see how I'm pushing it will be really worth it once you've got these in because once it's just dry it's not going to move and I think I'm really happy with that so now you just want to leave that as it is stood up right can you see how that's quite square now and hopefully contacting with glue um, so maybe taking something that you can stand it next to. I'm going to stand it next to my camera stand and hopefully keep it just standing upright. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut this bit because this is going to be our pattern. Now, if you remember the measurements of my book, it was 12 and a half wide for my sec uh, sec uh, sections and 19 centimeters length. So what I'm going to do is cut check your paper um, because you want if it's got a way of going you'll need to cut it that way but this seems to be random so I'm going to cut a 12 and a half width am I? No I'm going to cut a 19 centimetres long so I keep this bit for another project so I've got the length there and then I want two at 12 and a half And you've got some left which we'll probably put in the book somewhere as pockets or all sorts of things that we'll do so that glue would have gone off by now so I'm going to get my book back yeah, quite happy with that okay and what I tend to do is just give it a moment just to go off a bit and you can see that glue just rubs See how it rubs away once it's drying and what I'm going to do is stick these two covers in back and front I like to keep this gap so I can see how it's been made but you might want to make yours wider but I like to have it so when it folds it doesn't interfere with this page and that this is the movement of the book okay so I'm going to pop this in I'm using my multi-purpose glue again because what I find using this rather than double-sided tape is it gives you a little bit of movement when you're placing the book and everybody has their own way of sticking paper I tend to start at one edge work back okay I love this paper. I didn't get much use out of it when it was out and current, but now that we can no longer get it, I want to use it. And with most of us that do crafting, and I think some of you will relate, when you've got such beautiful paper, you don't want to cut it and you're saving it for that special event. But this junk journal is such a great way to use all this beautiful paper that you might have or to go and you know go out to your local craft store or even finding a stamping up demonstrator or um, someone that you can buy your papers from and just putting them together in such a wonderful way and you'll always be able to keep this so if you're not a scrapbooker or a card maker but you like to write and keep records and this is a great way to do it you make your own journal and away you go journal and I'm leaving this exactly like this I just love that it's a book so it can go in your bookcase and there you go we have our fronts in and our book is now ready to be filled and so I just wanted to show you um, on camera before we finish what we do with these string edges so 
I do is I punch out two of something. You're going to cut your string to where you want it. You take a bit of multi-purpose glue and put a bit of glue on. You put your string in a place where it will sit and then you stick the other layer on. And voila, you have tag in your book so you don't lose your ends they get tied off nicely and then you get to use them as a decoration so give that a good hour or so just drying because you can see it's come up a bit so keep just checking it until that glue really takes and yeah hopefully when I come back again some of you would have done your joke journals and be looking at filling them. So there is our book. It's a great thing. So I will see you.